we have so many of them running in our heads. <coughs> so many ideas about a shift, about living free the way we want to, the things that work for us. So many rules about capturing instead of freeing the moment. And we're still enslaved by it, generationally. I mean, I just got a little glimpse of it. The bottles were brown. They can't, we can't walk on them fine. What's been in? And you know, consciously, I don't think that. It doesn't even come to my head. And of course, I had a little, you know, release, release back there for a moment. Because I don't want that going unconsciously either. And I put it on automatic where these things will come up. I want them up. I want to know how the 143 and a half centimeters is working in my life. Where are the places in my life that I'm ashamed of who I am because I don't fit in somebody else's idea? Where am I trying to force love? Because I can't see them. I can't see those places. We're always in the most denial about ourselves. How do you know? See, the, the, the reason we stay like that is because what if we change? A three is better than a zero. What if we change and we get zero instead of three? What if we change and we get ten instead of three? How do we know when change is needed? Because that's the big question. That's the big <coughs> thing that makes us not change. We don't trust ourselves. We get complacent. Hmm? We get complacent. So what you're saying I is we pressure. know which things need to change if we get complacent. It could be all of them. Okay. Of them. Our pain threshold gets really big. <laughs> it is real fun. It isn't real fun when the change needs to happen and it's not, is it? It's like blowing a balloon up too big. When it goes from that place of things have gotten really good and then you start to get feed it, feedback that it's changing or shifting, the feedback is the information about not only does it need to change, but what needs to change. Because you could randomly change things. But the more attention you give to fine tuning, the feedback to the change, the easier the shift is. That's the why the question, how do you know? When you send a text, it's HF, do you know? <laughs> well, you know you're in the middle of something when it's HHF. No, you know by how you feel. Okay. If you feel good, then you're on the right track. If you don't feel good, then you know it's time for some change. Well, and... When you push up on the elevator. I want, to, I want to say that exact same thing in a little different words. First of all, you heard me talk about that we, people never shift until the pain is one ounce greater than the fear. Well, so that's why we've learned in pain, is because that's how we've shifted. So this is what I've got written here. How do you know when change is needed? Follow the signs or the omens. We just have to look around with open, willing eyes in order to discover where God is leading us and which step we should take next. Many people will say, I don't know what to do to me when they come in. I don't know. And I'll say, okay, well then just play a game with me, if you did. Mm -hmm. And then they'll tell me what they should do. Or they'll say, I don't want to know what to do, but this is what I'm doing. <clears throat> yeah, you do know. The problem isn't not knowing. The problem is not wanting to do it. <coughs> Who wants to run into a tornado? Oh, I think I'll just run right in there, and if I live, we'll do something different on the other side. That's sometimes what change feels like. Anna? It's just that um, the third characteristic of a, um, of a soul is down is willingness. Willingness. Trent said something true. The only thing you can count on is change. If it's really, really good, you can count that it'll change. If the day's really, really sunny, you can count that it'll change. If it's really raining, you can count on that it'll change. 
The one thing you can count on is change. Why? Why change?